Welcome back to another tutorial. I'm Leslie with Teaks Resort. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dyeing patent shoes. Now some things to remember it are that you cannot dye to a lighter color and dyes do not completely cover the color that your shoes already are. So I'm starting off with a pair of biscotti. So this is a good neutral uh, light color to start off with or you can use diamond white crocs. Now, if you're using another color such as lemon and you put blue dye on there, obviously those two colors are gonna mix and you're going to come out with a darker green color. So when you have base shoes to start out with and you want them to be another color, keep in mind the color of the shoe that you're starting off with. Um, a lot of colors you may end up with something totally different if you don't have the right base color. So I'm going to be doing these in a shift color but to start off with first they need to be colored a similar color to the shift color that I'm going to put on there. So we're going to be dyeing these. Um, first I'm going to use two different colors. So first of all I'm going to use rose um, angelus leather dye and if you ever get the leather dye from Ange angelus um keep the box poke out the little top like that and the dye box sits right in there this is very important because it'll keep it from tipping over can you see that it'll keep it from tipping over easy so Unless you're just super, super careful, keep it in there. All right, to prep what I'm gonna do, or first of all, the things that I'm gonna need is a brush. I use a brush, don't use the dauber that comes with that. The dye gets everywhere. You don't wanna see the first pair that I dyed. Um, I'm gonna use some acetone. I'm gonna use some alcohol. And I'm gonna probably use a whole mess of cotton balls. So to start out with, we are going to prep or deglaze these shoes by using the acetone and giving it a good wipe down. So this is pretty self-explanatory. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward through this because I mean, it's really, really simple. All right, so now the shoes are prepped. The reason I go over it with the acetone isn't to open up the pores like with classics, but you're gonna get off any of the dirt, any kind of residue that may be stuck on there, and uh, it'll give you a nice clean surface for the dye to soak into other than being, being repelled by whatever's on your shoe. So make sure the lid's on first. I like to shake it a little bit. And um, let's stick it back in the box. Can you see? Yep, we can see. All right, I'm gonna open it very carefully. And I'm not gonna put my brush in all the way and use this sparingly. This dye will go a long ways. Remember, you can't take it off, but you can put some more on. So I'm just going to start painting it on there. I'm not going to get too crazy about the area that I'm going to cover first because I'm going to show you how to match the areas. Make sure you get it down in the seams. Make sure you get it down on the bottom. Just around the top there. Don't let it run inside. Give it some nice long brush strokes and that'll help even out any of the other brush strokes that you may have on there. And we're not gonna stop, we're not gonna do section and then section because you're gonna kind of blend each section into the next so you don't end up with starts and stops. 
I'm just going to kind of pull it along. And don't forget to get that rim up there. And you can always go back and pull it around to the front some more. There's a couple little things there. I don't know what it is, but they'll come off. If you can hear my children, I do not know what they're doing. They're playing in ice at the moment. So, I'll have to go check on them here in a few minutes. See, that's what I'm talking about when you have spots that don't cover. So, you're just going to keep pulling it over until you end up with a nice, smooth color. And you're probably going to do more than one coat. There's... I don't remember any shoe that I've only done one coat on. Just try to use nice long brush strokes. And that's the key to not getting streaks. Because you're gonna keep blending one part into the other. Like that. We don't want that. So we're going to just pull some more over in different areas. And as I said, you'll put another coat on. So it's going to, when you wipe it off, you'll see some spots that you don't really like. Make sure you keep pulling it over. You're going to wipe all this back off anyway. When you get to the stripe, if you have a nice sharp brush, you can get right up there next to it. If you have tape on it, it won't soak through the tape, so you'll be safe. And if you have too much dye on there, you're going to drip, and you don't want drips. So as I said, make sure you get most of the dye off of the brush before you stop, start painting them. You can see how far it goes. I got a little spot back there. And now I've just got the heel left. If you ever want to make a color lighter, Angela sells a neutral dye too. So if you wanted like a really light pink, you just take mostly neutral and then um, add a little bit of pink to it and you can make, make it a lot lighter. But this I'm going to make into another color anyway. So. so I have it completely covered. I'll do the other one. I'll stop the video and I'll do the other one. I got some spots there on the front that don't look so great. That's all right. We'll fix it here in a minute. So I'm going to do this one, check on the children, and I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to hit this with a heat gun for a few seconds all the way around it. But if you want to let it dry for like 30 minutes to an hour and then come back to it or you know don't let it sit overnight or whatever but make sure you come back here in about an hour and get this off I'll show you what to do next all right all right so I've let it sit I hit it with the heat gun just a little bit and now it's time to wipe off the top layer so I'm gonna take my cotton balls and get a few of them ready and I'm gonna take which I always like to unroll mine because it makes them last a lot longer. I'll roll it back up. All right, so then I'm gonna take some alcohol, put a little on there, and just start wiping it off. And it does come off a little other colors come off a lot more so like you did with the dyeing just long strokes 
And this is just to get anything extra off. already a really pretty color there's a few light spots in there I don't know if you I don't know how visible they are and a couple little dark spots but that's why we're gonna do two layers but if you can see I don't know how well you can see as you use the alcohol it removes a little bit of the brush stroke so it just leaves a really pretty, solid color. So I've got a spot right there that I need me to work on. So that one's done, and I'm going to go ahead and do the other one real quick. Alright, so this is for the second coat, and we're just going to go through like we did with the first. Nice long brush strokes. And it should look like it's going to cover a lot better than the first layer did. Don't let it puddle up anywhere. And drag it out. And you can see where you start and stop. So just make sure to go back and put your new coat or your new brush strokes into the ones you'd already done. And blend those, those areas together. Now you can, since you're not supposed to paint top green leathers, you can dye those also. And you can take um, the lace teaks, the ones with the black floral lace on top, and you can dye the suede underneath. And then you'll have, you know, your pretty accent color underneath the black lace. And the black's not going to pick up any of this color because it's already black. It's already got all the colors in it. Make sure to slow down when you get back to the stripe. Take your time. Don't put too much on there. And blend it outward. And make sure to get into the creases. And don't forget this little area, but try not to get it on that. It takes a little care. But that's a nice, solid coat. And there's still a little bit of color transfer on these, but that's okay, because I'm going to do a different color on top. This is just for the tutorial. I'll put a little bit of purple on top of there. can see where it goes on so when you start painting it's usually a different color than when it dries so you can tell where you have have painted and where you haven't some of them have a really pretty iridescent color on top when they dry that's usually the darker colors blue has a really pretty color on top and so does the purple It doesn't stay though, because when you wipe it off the alcohol, that iridescent color comes off. Don't forget to get there up underneath the seam. 
Just don't let the drips run. That's why we're trying to get most of it off before we put on the shoe so we don't have drips. And if you do get this on your hands, yeah, it'll be there for a few days. If you get this on your table or on your clothes, it will be there. So if you want to put down some plastic underneath or some gloves to keep it protected, do that. I got a drip. me this is my craft table so it's got paint and dye and glitter and glue and all kinds of stuff on it and i don't care if my hands are pink for a few days Now, don't go through and like use really a lot of force. Just, just a light brush stroke will work. All right, now I'm gonna make sure I get the bottom down there. And I'm going to let these dry a little bit and hit them with the heat gun and do the exact same thing and use the alcohol and take that layer off after it dries. So I'll be back. All right, time to remove this layer of dye, or the excess, rather. Just like the first time, use nice long strokes. That way it all kind of blends together. And if you look really, 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 really careful, you might see a couple of lighter, lighter spots or darker spots. But if these are for you, then that would probably work. So this is like a, this is Rose from Angelus. Um, and it's like this really pretty dark rosy pink color. I don't know if you can see how see the color, but it's a nice solid color. I don't have brush strokes unless you're really 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 picky. There's some color transfer, but uh, unless you're really 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 picky, then you won't see anything wrong with it. Which I'm really critical on what I do, so I do see it. But if these were mine, I would definitely stop right here. And I would be extremely happy with it. Then I'm going to put a darker color on top of this to give it a little... I'm going to put purple on top of this to give it a little purple color. But I wanted the pink on the bottom to give that little hint of pink. It's a really pretty color if you like a coral. It's not really coral. It's it's a lot more pink than coral. And it's not got a lot of red to it either. It's it's a really good pink. And this is two coats. If you'd like it darker, put another coat on. And if this is yours and you're done and you worry about color transfer which I always do you 
because it is dye, I would just put on one really light coat of um, high gloss sealer from Angelus too. And you can use a little bit of high gloss sealer on patents and it'll be just fine because I've sealed, I've sealed mine with high gloss before and they work fine. So there's both of those. Aren't they pretty? Totally different from the pair we started with before. So if you have any questions about dyeing patents, any suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'm not sure if this is the right, wrong, I don't know, but I've been, I've, I've dyed shoes, teaks for two years now, and I've only had one that messed up, and that was my very first pair, so all the rest of them have looked awesome ever since, and they've held up. So if you have any suggestions, comments, just leave them in the comments. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to watch future videos. See y'all later.